<laughs> yes, you guys are here for the drama and the excitement because I still believe the Xbox Series S is better than ugh, the PlayStation 5. Let's start discussing. Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to Drama Central. Wait, no, sorry. Welcome to Border Work, where I tell you why I think the Xbox Series S is a better console right now than the PlayStation 5. Now, a lot of you are probably jumping in and going, yes, you are completely wrong. You don't understand anything about gaming. This is just rubbish. Calm down, guys. Calm down, calm down. Now, I'll tell you this. Look, the PlayStation 5 is a great console, just not for now. I think Sony has built something really good. I do like a lot of features on it, but I'll tell you off the bat, one of the things that has really held a lot of gripe in me is the fact that I've had so many issues with the console. I've had uh, shuts downs, it's just kind of frozen. And yes, some of those have been fixed with updates, but I didn't pay $500 in the holiday period to just go through that whole session. And yeah, I can go on and on about a PlayStation, but I'm here to talk about this bad boy, the Xbox Series S. Now the S here is interesting because it's one of those consoles, even I myself back then in November, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna spend more time on my Xbox Series X. And yes, I do have the X, I do have the S, and I do have the PlayStation 5. But this video, I wanted to think as a regular consumer, not as a reviewer, not as someone who has access to this stuff. Look, I got my Xbox from Microsoft, I was able to buy the PlayStation 5 and, and the Xbox Series S early, but as somebody who's trying to get a console to enjoy the next generation cycle. And let's put it this way, the Xbox Series S fits a lot of things that gamers are looking for. Price point, $350. It's easy and accessible, first off the bat, than the PlayStation 5. You've got something that will work with your current TVs well enough, uh, as opposed to upgrading to a newer TV like a new Sony, uh, Sony OLED or an LG OLED or even a Samsung Neo uh, you know, LED TV. Now, with the Xbox Series S, you've got a ton of features that you will not find anywhere else other than the Xbox ecosystem. One I really like, of course, is Quick Resume. Now, it's something you find on the Xbox Series X, but on the S, it's also available there. The ability to go from game to game to game quite easily and also resuming from the spot you stop is unbelievable. And that's something the PlayStation 5 just doesn't have. And yes, the PlayStation 5 has a lot of great games. Spider-Man, Miles Morales is a great game. God of War 5 is a fantastic game. Even the Street Fighter series is. And I love playing those games. But I like the fact that I can go from game to game. When I'm playing, you know, Forza Horizon 4 or moving over to uh, NBA 2K21, I can jump from game to game. Doesn't matter what game I'm playing. I can do that quite easily on my Xbox Series S. Now, another thing also is size and just fit. The PlayStation 5 is a massive console. It's big, it's bulky, it takes up a lot of space, you can't put it in a cabinet properly, and it's damn loud. As opposed to the Xbox Series S, which one's quiet, fits into whatever cabinet or size location you want to, plus, again, I'll mention, it can play the games you want to play. Now, speaking of games, let's talk about that quickly. This is where a lot of gamers have different perceptions in what you think about games and games collections. The PlayStation 5 has a lot of games in terms of backward compatible games from PS4, and that's great. Uh, PS Now is also really solid service. I was playing the infamous uh, Second Son. Great, I could stream it, I could play it. I like what PlayStation is doing there, but I want to see more. But here's the thing, there are not a lot of next-gen titles out for either consoles. There's just not that much available at this point in time. This is where Microsoft has levied the extent of Xbox Game Pass to make things more sensible. Now, the idea that I don't have to purchase a game and I have not bought a game on my Xbox console for at least almost a year because I have Game Pass. And now with that whole Bethesda uh, partnership, I have a ton of Bethesda games coming, a ton of exclusives, a ton of games on the Xbox that I don't have to pay for. So I just downloaded Dishonored 1 and 2. I've never played those games before. I can play them now on my Xbox Series S and they play well. And speaking of games playing well, what about Cyberpunk 2077? I know some of you don't like the game. I still enjoy it. I'm playing it both on PC 
and the Xbox Series S, I can't play it on my PlayStation 5. It runs well on this console. Mind you, this is, some people will call it a slightly updated Xbox One X, but the Xbox Series S plays Cyberpunk 2077 very well. And yes, I can output at its highest resolution for this console, which is great. Now, the other thing too is when you're buying a console like these, either the Xbox Series S, PlayStation 5, or Xbox Series X, you're going to probably want to upgrade to a new TV. And that's where some of the problem comes in. You can spend $500 on a console, like the PlayStation 5, and then spend another $2,000 on a brand new TV. You might not want to spend that amount of money yet, or you just don't have the cash for it, which is why the Series S makes a lot of sense to me. Now, the TV I use for this uh, review here is the uh, Samsung Q90 TV. It's a last gen TV, it does support 4K 120, on just one HDMI port. It's got one HDMI 2.1 port. And you can see supports the full breadth of 4K 120, uh, 4K 60, you know, 1080p 120, which I can do on my Xbox Series S comfortably. So again, I don't have to go to the next gen TV just yet. And I can wait till they fix out all the kinks and the bugs. And I know, yes, TVs this year are gonna get better, but some people might wanna wait. And this is what this console affords you. Now, some of you say there's a lot of games you can play in your Xbox Series S, but it's only got 512 gigabytes of storage internal. And yes, that is true. And that's a gripe that I hold and I wish it was one terabyte. But it is an external storage. And yes, it, it is expensive, but it allows me to store my games and transfer and carry me on the go. And it runs just as fast. That one terabyte Seagate storage, hopefully the price drops down is really good, works really well, but I have all my games stored on there. But again, because you have Game Pass, you can cycle the games you wanna play. You can install up to five, six games on there, and then, you know, when you're done, you take them off and you continue playing. To me, that's the beauty of Game Pass on the system like this. That makes a lot of sense. As I'm sitting back, I'm using my, uh, you know, my red controller. I'm gaming with the console. I'm enjoying the Xbox Series S here. I'm also using the brand new Xbox headset, which, Honestly guys, definitely check out my video on Board Gamer. You'll be impressed with what Microsoft has done with this. I don't wanna to talk too much about this, but the mic quality is absolutely fantastic. And also the features that are built into it that you can use your Xbox as well as also your laptop or your cell phone is truly amazing. Now, when it comes to features, there are a ton of features that I think the Series S has that you will not find on the PlayStation 5. So one of the things that I absolutely love in the console is I call it the quick start. There's no, I can't remember the specific feature name it's called, but the ability to turn off my Xbox Series S, turn it on and jump right back into a game. You cannot do that on your PlayStation. Those are great features. And again, I am not paying that amount of money. Then you look at the controller. Yes, I have the red controller. I just mentioned it. It's tried and true, it works really well. It runs on AA batteries. Yes, that's kind of annoying, but also actually good. Now, PlayStation, PlayStation 5 owners will tell you the controller is great, it's fantastic, it's a really good controller. The battery life sucks, absolutely sucks, okay? I mean, every time you play a game for a couple of hours, you have to start charging. I'm sorry, I can't live like that as a gamer. It doesn't make any sense. While AA batteries, yes, they're not the best in terms of uh, charging options, but they do last a long period of time. I have not changed my batteries on my Xbox Series S since launch and it's been over three months so far. So you do the math there. I think overall, when you look at where the console generation is at this point in time, remember at this point in time, the Xbox Series S is a clear advantage for a lot of gamers. You've got something that is cheaper to purchase, especially if you tie it in with Xbox Game Pass, then you have something that you can play as many games as you want to. The fact that I can jump in and play a game like Tekken, Dishonored, uh, I can go, jump in and play NBA 2K21. I haven't played an NBA game in a while because EA uh, access is available. I wouldn't have actually bought those games. I would never spend money on NBA 2K21 or a Madden game, but I will now play it because I have access to that. I think that's the beauty of this console. And I think, especially for someone who's not ready to jump or change their TVs, it's absolutely amazing. Now, don't get me wrong, PlayStation 5 has its way and has its time and it's just not ready yet. We'll see what happens when it comes and I'll give you my full take on where I think Sony went wrong with the PlayStation 5. But till then, the Xbox Series S is definitely better than the PlayStation 5. So let me know your thoughts. Let's argue. 
Otherwise, if you want to see more from the uh, Xbox Wireless headset, head over to Board Game and check that video out. And always enjoy the entertainment.